Hello and welcome to Conversations with April. Today we have with us April Givens, myself, licensed professional counselor, as well as Miss Crystal and Mercedes. Okay, so today we are going to talk about mental health as it relates to <clears throat> religion and church. This is a topic that we kind of hear about a lot, but no one just really dives deep into it and talk about the church aspect and our mental health. So that's what we, we're going to do today. Okay, ladies, what's your perspective on your mental health as well as your spiritual health and your religious health? What are your beliefs? that they can coincide together. Um, I'm a very faithful person. I'm a spiritual person. But I feel as if God created doctors to help us. So we, we can go to the church for counseling, of course, for certain things. But I think it's also healthy for you to go to a mental health um, specialist. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with seeking a <coughs> mental health specialist and also praying. You can pray and get treatment for mental health. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, I agree. So what would you say to people that feel like, you know, if you seek counseling, that's what crazy people do. You are considered, you know, crazy. So that's why maybe in the black community, we don't tend to turn to that. We're more comfortable with going to church and talking to the pastor about certain issues that happen in, in our life. I think that's not true. Going to counseling doesn't mean that you're crazy. Um, just like you seek out a doctor when you have issues with your body, when you have issues with your mind and your mental health, you need to seek out a counselor or a specialist. I think a lot of times in our community, the reason we go strictly to church is, like you said, because we feel comfortable. So many times in the black community, when we go outside of the black community to seek any type of medical help, we kind of have trust issues mm -hmm. with those other professionals outside of our community. So I think it's something that we just need to, like we're doing now, talk about more, get people educated, take the stigma off of it, remove the stereotypes, and normalize it. Just like when you go get your yearly checkup for your physical health, mm -hmm. you need to get your checkup for your mental health. Absolutely. What do you think, Mercedes? I mean, um, so I'm a Christian, so I grew up in the church my whole life. And Honestly, I can't remember any conversations that we really had specifically concerning mental health. Um, it was always, oh, you, you feeling bad? Well, we're going to pray for you. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, this is how you feel, we're going to pray for you. So it was never anybody that was really advocating for, okay, maybe you should go see a, a, a mental health professional. Um, I think now it's, it's getting better. Some churches are starting to get on this wave because yeah. uh, I know the Potter's House and also Concord in Dallas. They have their own like therapist for their or their therapy sessions or whatever for their yeah. um, for their members and also people who are not members. And they try to get more um, yeah. people to be on board with clinical mental uh, health awareness. So I applaud mm -hmm. that movement, but it's still we have a lot more work to do. Yeah. Well, St. Luke's <clears throat> in Dallas also. <clears throat> Um, does really well. They have a mental health ministry. And so they also put on the annual mental health symposium every year, which is really beneficial because it brings the community as well as some clergy and, you know, people that are local officials mm -hmm. together in having the discussion of mental health and how can we do better as a community. So I think that's important. And speaking of that, like, like you said, like growing up, I don't ever remember anyone saying anything about mental health. It's only really been the last 10 years or so that I've kind of heard that and kind of seen the movement more in church. And when I was in Dallas before, I was a member at Concord. So we would have the ministers that were counselors. And so that was like really important and kind of like eye opening for me. Mm -hmm. And then I took like a biblical lay counseling <clears throat> class where we talked about like scriptures and how they related to, um, to like mental health mm -hmm. and but at the same time it was like not just just read scriptures mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It's like you read the scriptures as well as your foundation, but then we apply um, the mental health actual experts mm -hmm. who do the counseling that did have a scriptural background, yeah. but it was, you know, actual mental health experts and really focusing on that. And I thought that was really great mm -hmm. and like beneficial to look at it differently. That's good. I think uh, also people don't seek mental health professionals because they feel like God is this all, you know, mm -hmm. ultimate being. So it's, I mean, if I take my depression to him, surely something will happen. Yeah. Like he's all I need. And they don't really understand that God, of course, that's, he's yeah. all knowing, but you also can go get help. Like faith without works is dead. Yeah. And I know they say that, uh, but I don't know if they really believe it sometimes. So they're like, oh, this is my God. He has the answer to everything. Yeah. He's, you know, he can fix any demons that I'm experiencing. And then they label it as demons, like depression. Oh, that's some, or any type of yeah. negative feelings that you have. Oh, that's, that's the devil right there. And so that's, again, another issue that turns people away from seeking counseling or, or even telling other people, hey, I'm feeling depressed or hey, I have these feelings because they're yeah. like, oh, I don't want to be condemned or oh, I don't want to be looked at as a, yeah. a demon seed, whatever. So that's a, another issue in itself. But see, God gives us all five senses. And that's <clears> the thing. <throat> like you said, faith without works is dead. If sometimes God can bring people into your life to tell you things mm -hmm. so you can go get the help that you need. So if you have this, this inkling, because everybody has their intuition, and a lot of times you just, well, all the time, you need to trust that. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if something inside of you is telling you, okay, something's not right with me. I'm feeling some type of way, and I know this is not normal because this is not my normal routine. This is not something that I'm usually doing. So maybe I do need to talk to someone. That's the same thing. If you go into your, you know, your medical doctor when you having consistent migraines or stomach issues or something's going on, you're going to go to the doctor to figure it out. So the same thing you should do with your mental health. If you are consistently down and depressed and dragging and don't want to get out of bed, sleeping consistently, doing things like that, you could be potentially depressed. It could be something more going on there. So do you continue to just, okay, I'm just going to pray. And hopefully it just prayed away. Or am I going to take an active approach and go out and seek some help? Mm -hmm. Get someone other opinion of what I can do. And a lot of times I would say sometimes it's best to keep it to yourself. Especially if you have people in your in your circle that may not necessarily agree or your family based off of your upbringing or how you grew up. You know, you may have your mom or some other relatives or dad telling you, oh, well, nothing's wrong with you or it'll go away or whatever the case may be. If you know inside of you that something's not right, you don't necessarily have to tell them that you're seeking help. You just go on your own quietly and reach out to someone for some help. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think you made a good point. Um, when people are going to church thinking God is all and if, if God is not enough right. and I think that that may be that kind of like hit me like aha I think people may have that thought in their head like God should be able to do it all if maybe I'm not praying enough maybe mm -hmm. I'm not having enough faith but I think we need to make it okay for people to understand that yes God is all but he also gives us people to help us mm -hmm. so it's not it's not saying that you're like anti-Christ if you're going to see somebody else for help because mm -hmm. just like you seek him for other things and you need to lean on each other you know like two or three together iron mm -hmm. sharpens iron so he always has us <clears throat> with friends helping friends you know or people that help us it's not like us saying we don't believe or you don't have faith yeah. it's, it's something that goes along with your faith if you feel like you can't do it by yourself mm -hmm. It's okay, and I think that's that was important when I heard it like that aha moment. Like we need to normalize it again, Lord. It's, yeah, it's okay. You know, you don't have to just. It's okay not to just pray mm -hmm. to do things like mm -hmm. like you said. Um, faith without work is dead. For to put that together, that we can have our faith, that we can pray to God, that God will deliver us. But He also sends us people that are mm -hmm. qualified and specialized, and that can see specific things that we can't see. Yeah, and it's important to, you know, don't pray to God if you're not willing to move your feet. Mm -hmm. 
you know. So right. you're 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 praying, but you're not putting forth the action. Nobody's gonna show up at your door. Right. And a lot of people, you know, they they think that even in you know relationships, it's like, oh well, the man ain't gonna come knock on the door. Right. You know, you're praying about it, but okay, what are you doing? Are you actively putting yourself out there, making yourself available? So with the mental health aspect, you have therapists who have a spiritual basis. Mm-hmm. You know, so if if religion and Christianity is important to you, seek out a therapist that has that background. You know, everybody, for the most part, put on their profile when you're Googling, when you're researching people, just like you would research your medical doctor and his facility before you go there. Research your mental health therapist before you go and seek counseling mm-hmm. and see, okay, is this person, <clears throat> do they have a spiritual basis? Are they aligned you know, with God, do they believe in God or whatever? It's important. Even in you, when you go to your initial session, it's okay to ask those questions. You know, hey, do you believe in God? And seek help from that person if that person aligns with you. But also, you know, sometimes people don't click. So you can go to, just like you would go to your doctor's office, an initial appointment, and you might see, okay, well, I don't I don't think this doctor is right for me. Let me go get a second opinion. So when you go to your initial session and you might not vibe with that particular therapist, it's okay to tell that therapist that, you know, I'm going to seek someone else that may be more aligned with what my beliefs are. And that's okay. I think it's important to tell people. Like to educate some people may think, oh, I just go to a counselor. They don't really know, like you just said, the resources to go on a website to look for the information mm-hmm. that they can go in there and ask, you know, how they're aligned spiritually and if they um, connect spirituality with their services. So, the education <clears throat> of people to know what yeah. options are out there. I think it's also important to consider the barriers that especially the black community has Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to mental health because cost is also an issue. It can be an issue. Um, Transportation, you know, and it's a lot of different things, like just the inavailability of a lot of black therapists because what I hear is, oh, it's not enough a black therapist or whatever black counselors but that's not um, true right that's, but that's the thing mm-hmm. and see that's when people are misinformed mm-hmm. and that's where they have to do their own research right. you know it's tons of us it's tons of black therapists out there you know it's just a matter of they get people get on google for anything else that they want <clears throat> information about mm-hmm. so research Type in Google African American therapists in your area, right. black therapists in your area. Another resource is Psychology Today. For the most part, everybody I know, we're all listed on Psychology Today. Mm-hmm. You know, they have another black therapist um, <clears throat> website mm-hmm. to where you can go on and you can find specific, you know, black therapists if that's what you specify, if that's what you want. Mm-hmm. But you have to be in charge of your own mental health. And not use that as an excuse, oh, where well, it's not a black therapist. You right. know, oh, well, the the money. Just like you go to your doctor if you were diagnosed with cancer. You're going to find the money, right? So you can get your cancer treatment. So most insurances cover that. Just like mental health, insurances cover that too. Mm-hmm. So there's no excuse to say, oh, I can't afford it. Especially if you have insurance. If you have right. insurance... Contact your insurance plan. A lot of times your insurance will give you a list of <clears throat> mental health therapists that are in network with your insurance that they cover. Also, mostly everybody job offer an EAP program. And a lot of people are not aware about EAP. EAP is the Employee Assistance Program, which they offer mental health benefits. Mm-hmm. So your EAP may allow you to get anywhere between three and six and eight sessions for free that the EAP will cover as a part of what you're paying into in your job. So it's important for us to educate our community so they can know these things exist. So there's no excuse for you not to seek help because if you're working at any particular company, nine times out of 10, they have an EAP program. That's good. Yeah, education. Mm -hmm. And then knowledgeable of what resources you have the EAP definitely I remember working at jobs before and hearing mm-hmm. it no, yeah. but not really knowing what it was, knowing what it was until mm-hmm. like it was needed mm-hmm. and then it's like oh you don't oh because you hear it mm-hmm. and then you don't hear it but like you say education is a big part of it 
a big part of the unknown. And mm-hmm. even sometimes people are scared of the unknown. Because, you know, you see someone and they just label it as crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just a general term. I remember in, in college, because I was a psychology major, my teacher was like, we don't say crazy. That's yeah. a general term. It's something specific. And I think a lot of times the unknown can be scary. Mm-hmm. And that could be kind of like part of it as well. But a lot <clears> of times <throat> it's just important to dig a little deeper and to have someone that's trained and professional that you can talk to about things that's going on with you. Cause, and then you don't necessarily have to have a serious diagnosis such as something like bipolar disorder or a schizophrenic. It could just be you've been depressed for uh, several months due to the death of a loved one or a divorce or you know loss of a child or something that has occurred in your life, some type of trauma that you need to figure out how to get past it. And a lot of times with seeking a professional, you can learn specific coping skills on how to pick up the pieces after you've experienced whatever trauma you've experienced in your life. So in the church, are we, like, whose role is it to to be an educator? So are we saying the pastors need to, you know, start mentioning mental health in their sermons? Or how would we go about that would just be a educating start. I would People. think like everybody has mm-hmm. a role to play. I think it would be great to come from the top up, you know, so the pastors. Um, I've had pastors that have been very vocal about mm-hmm. mental health and very vocal um, about the counseling center. And then I think it's also helpful for like the deacons when, you mm-hmm. know, you're reaching out to your deacon, you're having a problem, you lost a family member, you know, for them to mention that. I think it's important for us in the pews to encourage mm-hmm. each other when you see somebody going through especially when you see something you've been through it and you know, you know, I think it's important for us to make it when somebody speaks out that they need help for us to support them right. and make it okay and to make it normal mm-hmm. and not, not to make them feel like a stigma or something's, wrong, something's yeah. wrong with them and let yeah. them know, you know, we've all had issues and struggles. So I think it's across the board, everybody, yeah. you know, being able to play a role and being supportive. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Anything else, ladies? I kind of think, like, this, what we've been talking about, like, the education piece, mm-hmm. like you're saying, do your research. <clears throat> like, we Google everything. I didn't even think about that. Like, the resources of where to go to find counselors and black counselors mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. ways to break through those barriers mm-hmm. and, and making it normal and, and not a stigma and mm-hmm. a stereotype it's, and it's a, a piece that we can all play individually mm-hmm. to help yeah. better it and just making it a priority like you said yeah. because just like if they were hurting or feeling ill they would go to the doctor mm-hmm. um, no matter like they may have to borrow some money from such and such or they'll find a way you know they need some you know, the medicine yeah. I think for mental health they don't see it as important as the physical the uh, health. So sometimes they're like, oh, I can't afford it. Oh, that's too much. Oh, I can't afford it, whatever. I'm just going to have to keep praying or keep trying to see what my pastor has to say about this or whatever. So they don't move forward um, in trying to research and figure out that they can have free sessions from their job and things like that. So I think it's really important for people to make it a priority. Um, and see it just as important as, you know, their physical, every, anything else that's important in their yeah. lives. And your mental and your physical health go together. Right. So you can't have one without the other. Mm-hmm. And if your mental health is not intact, mm-hmm. it can definitely start affecting yeah. your physical yeah. health. So that's, that's very important. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, ladies. So this concludes our discussion. <clears throat> Until next time, be blessed. Bye. Bye, y'all.